It's Kiss 104.1, Atlanta's best R&B. I am Tony Moore. That's more Tony if you say it backwards. And, of course, the stress reliever, George Wilborn, our producer here as well, Jordan. And we have a very special guest this morning because, of course, May is National Women's Health Awareness Month. So we wanted to tackle a few issues that are plaguing our communities and affecting black women especially. And so I thought there's no other man to bring in here outside of Dr. Lippman. He is the founder and medical director of the Atlanta Fibroid Center, also an assistant professor at Morehouse School of Medicine. And he is the expert in fibroids in this, I'm going to say the world. I'm just going to go ahead and say that. <laughs> and it is world. an honor to have <laughs> you here with us today. Woo! Come on in, Dr. Lippman. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. So, Dr. Lippman, I wanted to talk to you about fibroids because, of course, uh, for those who don't know, black women, by the time we're 50, 80 percent of the population will be affected by fibroids. Why is this so prevalent in our community? Well, there's a number of reasons why. We don't know where fibroids come from, and that's uh, unfortunate because it affects so many women, as you mentioned, particularly women of color. But once they arrive on the scene... They grow with estrogen and estrogen is kind of pervasive in the food and the water uh, hair relaxers which used to be a much more prevalent issue back in the day now women wearing their hair more natural but uh, the main ingredient in relaxers is biochemically very similar to estrogen there's hormone rich foods not you know red meat non-organic chicken dairy um, estrogen is stored and produced in body fat and if you look vitamin d is one of the most powerful anti-fibroid growth hormones it's really a hormone not a vitamin but if you have a normal vitamin d you're much less likely to suffer with fibroid only 10 percent of african-american men or women have adequate vitamin d so it's multifactorial so it's not just diet but diet plays a role there are things you can do to try to minimize your risk to having symptomatic fibroids. And speaking of symptomatic fibroids, a lot of women don't have any symptoms. Right. So some of the talk about some of the symptoms that they do experience and yep. then for women who may not be having any symptoms, how that discovery comes about. Well, if you have no symptoms, you may not know you have fibroids, which is fine. Um, it, it often gets discovered either on physical exam at your gynecologist's office. These are hard and firm tumors. They're like rocks. So it can be felt on exam. Sometimes a woman feels it herself and wonder, my just getting a little older, I'm getting poochy, you know, and I can feel something. Or it's discovered on ultrasound. Maybe she's pregnant and they see a small fibroid incidentally that's not causing any issue. But symptom-wise, it is the most common reason why women have heavy periods. And sometimes women bleed so heavily for so long, they don't even realize it's not normal. Yeah. Um, and if you do it long enough, you become anemic. Dr. Lemon, quick question for you. So as a black woman who is living with fibroids, who also has anemia, can you you speak to a little bit more about the recovery process and time for the procedure that you do? The procedure has a very brief recovery, nothing like surgery. Surgery, you might be out six, eight weeks or more. Our patients are out five or six days. And so, you know, Tony can speak to the recovery, but it's a 30 minute procedure, home the same day. You have a band aid. That's wow. it, a Band-Aid, no surgical wound or incision. We've had numerous children born after UFE. I've had multiple twin births after UFE, and our births are typically full-term and vaginal. The chance of you getting successful child after UFE is every bit as good as after myomectomy, but the nice thing about UFE is it's much safer and less invasive because some of the myomectomy patients wake up without their uterus. Wow. None of our patients yeah. do, so it's safer. It's very effective, and you treat all the fibroids, not some of them. So the chance you need something else down the road, very likely with surgery, very unlikely with UFE. And it's interesting because I'm looking at, we're in here, three black women, two out of three have either dealt with or are dealing with fibroids. So yep. that's one reason why we wanted to bring this conversation to the table today as we do our part to raise awareness about women's health this month. Dr. Littman, thank you so much. My pleasure. Yes. I really appreciate the opportunity to get this information out because everybody can make their own decision once they know all the options, not just the surgical ones. Yeah, right. There it is. All right, it's Kiss 104.1, Atlanta's best R&B. Yeah. I ain't seen you in a minute.